flu season or COVID symptoms, we tell you how to protect yourself. A ninth concert goer passed away from the Astro World Festival. Hear what parents have to say. And a local Norman business is supporting military men and women on this Veterans Day. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Elise Jones. And I'm Colby Terrell. We begin tonight with flu season approaching quickly. As the weather begins to cool down, many flu cases are being reported on campus. OU Nightly's Kaylee Tinglestad tells us what to do if you start feeling under the weather. The peak of flu season in Oklahoma is typically in January. And this year, OU Chief COVID-19 Officer Dr. Dale Bratzler believes there will be an increase in cases compared to last year. And during that peak, we were social distancing. We had shut down a lot of things. We had people working from home. People were wearing masks fairly consistently in all settings. And I think because of that, we didn't see a lot of influenza last year. Although about half of Oklahoma is vaccinated for COVID-19, the same can't be said about the flu. It's not too late to get your flu shot. It typically only takes about 10 days for it to develop. I encourage people to do it now. Do it before Thanksgiving. Uh, when you're going to be going home and be, being with family, because if we start to see flu outbreaks, that's where it's going to spread. Three things to keep in mind this flu season. Wash your hands, maintain a good cough and sneeze etiquette, and wear your mask. If you are experiencing any flu-like or COVID symptoms, the most important step is to get tested. The only major difference between the two illnesses is that COVID-19 may cause loss of taste or smell, but that has also been seen with the flu. There are rapid tests that will check for the flu and COVID-19 at the same time. If you're vaccinated, even if you get the disease, either flu or COVID, you're much, much less likely to end up in a hospital or have complications of the disease. If you feel that you could be experiencing allergy symptoms, take an antihistamine. If that doesn't work, then go get tested. If you feel any symptoms, it's important to stay home to slow the spread of co flu, COVID, or anything else. Scores of people were injured at a Travis Scott performance last Friday. Now another person has died of injuries caused by crowd surge. Pepper Papura has that story in the rest of today's headlines from around the world. Thanks, Elise. Marty Jahani is the ninth victim of the Astroworld Festival. The 22-year-old student at Texas A&M University was on a ventilator in critical condition before passing away last night. Her mother, along with the families of other victims of the crowd surge, spoke at a press conference. What happened to my blessing, though? I, I want my baby back, you know? Dozens of others were injured at the music festival, including a nine-year-old child who remains in a medically induced coma. The trial of Kyle Rittenhouse may come to a close sooner than expected. Rittenhouse is a 17-year-old accused of killing two men and wounding another during civil unrest in Wisconsin. The judge stated it would be ideal to finish the trial by tomorrow before today's testimony. During today's testimony, the use of force expert was called by the defense. The witness stated that the events unfolded within a few minutes in a much shorter time span than the prosecution suggested. The trial is still in session. Another high profile trial continues into its fifth day. Jurors listened to a property owner's 911 call from months before Ahmad Arbery was killed and a testimony from the caller. The defense attorney also expressed concern that the jury may, be, may feel intimidated by the presence of certain people in the courtroom. If we're going to start a precedent starting yesterday, we're going to bring high profile members of the African American community into the courtroom to sit with the family during the trial in the presence of the jury. I believe that's intimidating and it's an attempt to pressure. Other members of the defense stated they don't believe their presence is a distraction. And three former presidents are asking for support to build a national museum and monument to honor Medal of Honor recipients. Elise Colby, back to you. Well, it is November and we're still experiencing that pattern of changing temperatures, Elise. Yeah, I never know if I'm going to need to be bundled up or if I can wear shorts to class, but Peyton Galleon may have the answer as to when the cool temperatures will stay. 
Well, right now, outside temperatures across the majority of Oklahoma are in the mid to lower 60s. Compared to yesterday, we are a little bit cooler because we did have that cold front making its way through the state that brought that line of severe weather through our area. And looking at a few storm reports from last night, we can see hail in Oklahoma City and two reports of tornadoes. So coming up in Maine weather, I'm going to talk about the severity of these storms, your football forecast and the cooler temperatures on the way. Colby and Elise. President Biden says veterans are representing the spine of America as he honored those who have served today. A ceremony held at Arlington National Cemetery included a flyover in the laying of a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. President Biden gave a speech to honor the Americans that have served in various countries. And so on Veterans Day and every day we honor that great debt and recommit ourselves to keeping our sacred obligation as a nation to honor what you've done. President Biden reminded America to make sure veterans receive the world-class benefits they have earned. Here in Norman, Campus Corner has an assortment of restaurants, shops, and bars, but only one brewery. OU Knightley's Ben Thomas tells us how this one business is making a difference. When Cross Cannon Brewery arrived at Campus Corner, one thing stood out. It is veteran-owned. Bo Salois, a former member of the United States Navy, and his wife Katie opened Cross Cannon Brewery after he returned from deployment. Once he was back, Bo came across the art of brewing beers and has now made a living off of it. Her, her brother-in-law came in and told me about all these beer kids, how awesome they are. I homebrewed for about eight years, winning various competitions and things of that nature. And so the love of beer just really grew from there. Being veteran-owned, Cross Cannon Brewery has become a hotspot for veterans and military personnel along with the Norman community and has been able to give vets a place to work or simply come hang out and grab a drink. Uh, we stumbled upon a couple of us that are veterans and, you know, we all went here to OU. We uh, stumbled upon the bar and sitting here with a couple friends and I asked them, hey, do you need help? And they're like, okay. And ever since then, it's been, it's been a really good, uh, good thing for me here, so. But beyond the brewery having military ties, Cross Cannons wants to do their part by supporting vets in the military any way they can. We uh, actually just uh, instated a uh, veteran board here so people can come in and buy a beer for a veteran. And uh, we can put it up on the board so if you're a veteran you can come in, have a free beer, have a couple, and uh, really relax and enjoy here. Cross Cannon Brewery is making a name for itself on Campus Corner and looks to continue to give back to our brave service men and women one beer at a time. For OU Nightly, I'm Ben Thomas. You can visit Cross Cannon Brewery on Boyd Street just past Campus Corner. Well, over 2 million COVID-19 test kits were recalled in the U.S. Millions of dollars down the drain, and we'll tell you just why when we return. Plus, thousands of babies missed their vaccines last year. Now, the CDC is warning parents to be careful of a certain disease. Straight ahead on OU Nightly. Some at-home coronavirus test kits have been recalled due to false positive results. Ashley Vandevelde has more in today's Health Beat. Thanks, Colby and Elise. More than 2 million coronavirus at-home test kits from the brand Illum were recalled due to false positive results. Regulators say false positives could lead to a delayed diagnosis or treatment of the actual cause of illness. There have been 35 reports of false positives. The FDA says the reliability of negative test results is not affected. In February, the Biden administration awarded nearly $232 million to Illum to produce its at-home tests. Vaccinations for kids ages 5 to 11 are ramping up, but other threats loom. Vaccinations for COVID-19 aren't the only immunizations doctors are concerned about as measles increases its threat. The CDC reports 22 million babies worldwide missed their vaccinations last year during the pandemic, worsening, worsening the global threat of measles. Meanwhile, there was a more than 6% spike in COVID-19 cases in children this past week compared to the week before. 
And if you've ever been on social media scrolling only to look at the clock and realize you've spent way too much time on the app, you're not alone. Instagram is testing a new feature meant to help people take control of their time. Head of Instagram Adam Mosseri says the feature is called Take a Break and sent to launch in December. It reminds people when they have spent a long time on Instagram, users must opt in and choose how long their browsing limit is before an alarm rings. I know this feature will come in handy for me. Colby, Elise, back to you at the desk. One local library is honoring a lost loved one. Find out how they're commemorating their coworker and friend when we come back. Plus, if you're heading to Waco this weekend, Peyton will tell you the forecast for the game. Peyton? I'll have the latest football forecast for Waco. And as the sun begins to set tonight, those cooler temperatures are right around the corner. Stay right here with OU Nightly for the latest on that. Now that we are in daylight saving time, you can see that the sun is beginning to set across the Oklahoma City skyline. It's clear skies, temperatures at 62 degrees with a relatively light wind and a very low dew point compared to yesterday with those storms coming in. For the rest of the metro, mid and lower 60s and for the rest of the state, the same can be said as well. A little bit warmer down in Lawton, but the good majority of the state is staying right on track with those 60s. And last night when we had those severe storms make its way through the area, they came through about Norman around 7, 8 o'clock. And this line, although it does look severe, we didn't really have as many effects here in Norman as other parts of the state. But this line did move out of the state of Oklahoma and out of our viewing area late last night and early this morning. It left behind a trail of some hail and a few tornadoes, one reported here in Tulsa and one reported down in Stephen County. North OKC towards the Edmond area did have lots of reports of some hail. And the two tornadoes that were reported yesterday did increase our average for this time of year. We are now above average. We now have recorded 58 tornadoes here in Oklahoma for the year. There is still a month and a half left of the year and October really set us above with those 31 reported tornadoes. But for your Veterans Day forecast, 63 here in Norman, 62 in Oklahoma City, Tulsa 62 degrees, a relatively lovely day, clear skies, not a cloud in the sky. And if you are heading down to Waco for the game this weekend, kickoff, it will be at 11 a.m., a little chilly at 50s in the mid 50s, but as the game goes throughout, temperatures will warm up another clear sky as we take on the Bear Baylor Bears. And as we go into next week, we are going to see a little bit chance of some cooler temperatures going into this weekend. You can see this big trough dumping some cold air into Norman that's going to stick around into the morning hours throughout the weekend. But as we go into next week, we are going to warm up with these warmer um, colors coming into the state of Oklahoma. But for the rest of your week, your Friday, we are going to cool down a bit, a little bit windy. And Saturday, we have sunny skies for the football. So get outside, watch the game with some friends. And going into next week, Monday 65, but Tuesday and a Wednesday, we warm back into the 70s before another cool front is expected to make its way through the area into Thursday. You see that 56 degrees and that 47 for the low. So Colby and Elise, these temperatures are once again fluctuating, but you can lose that jacket for the time being. Back to you. Many have lost friends, family, and even colleagues to COVID-19, and the Norman Public Library is no exception. Celinda Richardson Martin worked as a customer experience manager at the Norman Public Library for over 15 years. She helped customers outside of just finding a book, and colleagues say not a day went by she didn't leave a positive impact on them and the community. Employees felt the best way to honor her was through an art piece of over 2,000 origami cranes, donated by her family members and employees from all libraries in the area. Her husband said it great, if you just try a little bit, you can make a big difference in the world. And she tried a little bit all the time, she tried a lot all the time, and, and made beautiful things around. Even after she's gone, she still... Colleagues say Richardson Martin was a jack of all traits, helping any way and anyone she could. Well, another day in Norman and another award. Caleb Williams is racking them up, even with the late start to the season. That nominations, that is. Stone Weber is here to tell us which one he's up for this time. Stone? Superman continues to impress. The Thunder win their third game in a row. And two dunks you don't want to miss. Sports is next.
I'm Sloan Weber, and it is time for your sports. Although he only has four career starts under his belt, Caleb Williams is up for one of the most prestigious awards in college football. It was announced today Williams is one of the 15 semifinalists for the Walter Camp Award. Head coach Lincoln Riley says he's great off the field as well. He's got a pretty good feel for a young guy of he can be pretty serious and pretty into it, but also it doesn't tense him up, and there's, a, there's certainly a relaxed side of him too. So, um, yeah, hopefully that gives you some insight. Um, he's, a, no, he's, he's a neat kid. He really is. Got a, got a cool personality and a, and a good way about him. Heading over to the hardwood, the OU women's volleyball team heads to Austin to take on Texas. The 10 and 13 Sooners look to pull off a huge upset against the number two ranked Longhorns. OU softball wraps up their fall slate of games as they take on the North Texas Mean Green. The Sooners are looking to finish their fall season a perfect 5-0. The start for both events is 7 p.m. Porter Moser and the boys are back in action tomorrow night, coming off of a 77-59 win over Northwestern State. Jalen Hill and Tanner Groves led the way with 15 each. The Sooners face off against the UTSA Roadrunners at 7 p.m. at the Lloyd Noble Center. The women's basketball team is coming off of a hard-fought 73-71 win over the South Dakota Coyotes. The Sooners have their home opener in a Friday morning showdown with the Arkansas State Red Wolves. The fun begins at 10.30. The Oklahoma City Thunder got their fourth win of the season last night as they defeated the New Orleans Pelicans 108-100. to Lou Dort led the way for the Thunder with 27 points on 8 of 13 shooting. Rookie sensation Josh Giddy had a productive game all around, finishing with 7 points, 9 assists, and 12 rebounds. And some breaking news out of the NFL, free agent wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. has agreed to a contract with the LA Rams. Beckham Jr. has 54 career touchdowns and will join the powerhouse offense at SoFi Stadium. The Rams play the San Francisco 49ers next week on Monday night. And another big time move from the No Fun League, 2015 MVP Cam Newton agreed to a deal with Carolina earlier today. Newton is the franchise leader in passing yards, passing touchdowns, and rushing touchdowns. However, P.J. Walker is set to start this weekend versus the Cardinals. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens head to Hard Rock Stadium for a matchup against Jacoby Brissett or possibly Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. The Ravens sit atop the, NF the AFC North with a record of 6-2, while the Dolphins are 2-7 and, and at the bottom of the AFC East. Joe Buck and Troy Quinn have the call tonight at 7.20 p.m. on Fox. The Warriors have had a dream start to this season, starting at 10-1, but the most memorable event from last night came from an unlikely party. Former number one overall pick Andrew Wiggins gets the pass from Steph Curry, takes one dribble, and brings the house down over Carl Anthony Towns. But Wiggins wasn't finished yet. Late in the fourth quarter, Jordan Poole misses a three, but Wiggins is there for the emphatic putback over Cat again. And with two dunks like that over him in one night, it might be time for Cat to rethink his career choice. Elise, Colby, back to you. Well, that dunk was crazy, and I know that that's what I would look like if I was out there too. That was rough. He, he really got dunked on. <laughs> it's been a crazy weekend in sports, crazy week in sports. I'm going to Waco this weekend. Hopefully it doesn't look like that when the Sooners take on Baylor. I can't say I'm going to be able to make it out this weekend, but I will say I'm ready for some more OU football. Well, we want to say a thank you to all veterans and a happy Veterans Day to all of who have served. We're going to tell you one way that the veterans are being honored by a major company straight ahead on OU Nightly. I'm Jaden Brannon at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Minnesota mothers can begin to receive paid lactation breaks beginning in 2022. This law comes into place after two lawmakers who experienced what it's like to work and nurse at the same time wanted to make a change. Federal law currently requires reasonable break time for lactation, but no compensation. Minnesota is the third state to ensure that mothers are paid when they step away to nurse. Back to you in the studio. On this Veterans Day, Walmart is sharing how they've stepped up to honor veterans and military families. The company hired nearly 30,000 veterans and military spouses in the last quarter, the most in Walmart history. They also started the Find a Future platform to help veterans and families start careers, businesses, and gain skills. 300,000 people joined the program just this year. And if you have a veteran in your family and plan to celebrate, the, celebrate them, Peyton is back to tell us what the weather may look like for your weekend plans. Well, if you're heading out tonight, temperatures are going to continue to drop 
throughout the evening, dropping down to about in the 40s by 9 p.m. Relatively light winds and for your weekend, it's still going to be a little bit chilly, so make sure you grab that jacket jacket as you head out 55 for Friday, 58 for Saturday, 60s for Sunday and Monday, warming back up for Tuesday and Wednesday before another cold front makes its way through on Thursday. Colby and Elise. Thank you for watching OU Nightly. Be sure to tune in every weekday live at 430. Have a good night.